The easiest way to make a title is to use a template. So I'm going to show you several templates in this lesson. Let's go to Working Files, Projects, and scroll on down to 1602 Templates. We're going to work with these three sets of clips. We're going to make titles for all three of them, and we're also going to make a fourth title here as a list. So we'll start off with this first one, where we want to make a location super. When I make a title, I usually have my current time indicator at the location where that title is going to go, so I can refer to that as I make the title. Even if you don't have it in the right place, you can always move it later. Nevertheless, let's get started. There are a few ways to make a new title. You can go to File, New, Title. that will open up this little dialog box. Or you can go to Title, New, Title. And you can choose Still, Roll, Crawl, or Based on Template. We're going to use the template here. If you do that, it opens up this template dialog box. Or I think the easiest way to go is just down here at the bottom where you have New Item. And click on Title. It asks you for a name for the title. So I'm going to call this one Location Super. And click OK. And here it opens up the titler in a blank slate. But we don't want a blank slate, we want a template. So once it's open like this, you can go up to this little button up there, those little T's, and click on that, and it opens up the templates dialog box you just saw a moment ago. Templates are organized by groups in terms of their subject matter. You can see them all there. I want to track down one that we're going to use here. It's an upper third. Upper thirds are the most commonly used for location supers, and lower thirds are commonly used when you're supering an individual's name. I'm going to go to upper thirds here. I want to select one of them. So as I scroll through here, I can see different kinds. This one on top we've used in the demo, so I'm going to use it now. So I select it, click OK, and it opens it up here. Pretty simple. Now I've got my type tool selected here. Now you can tell it's selected because it's kind of depressed. It has that little darker area in it like that. If I hover around, you can see it's got that little eye beam there. See the little eye beam? That means if I click, then I can start typing right at that spot. But what I want to do instead is I want to change text here. So as I hover the type tool over the text, notice that it changes. The text gets highlighted like that, and the title tool no longer has that little box around it. That means if you click inside here, you can now highlight the text, and you can work on the text. And you can navigate through it using the arrow keys, like so. Or if you double click inside here, you can select the text. Or if you just click over here and drag, you can select all of the text. So I want to replace the text. So if I click and drag like that and select all of it, the moment I start typing, it's going to replace it. So I'm going to type in Sonoma. County, California, like that. Now I've gone beyond the edge of that little graphic there. So what I want to do is I want to be able to stretch it off to the right. But if I try to select it with my type tool, it won't work. So I go back up here to the selection tool and click on that. Now when I click on this graphic, you can see that it's outlined. You see it's bounding box. So if I go over here and grab the edge of the bounding box, I've got a little double-headed arrow there. I can pull it to the right, fill the background like so. Now we've taken a template and made it work for us. No other change is necessary. When I close the titler, it saves it automatically and puts it up here inside the project panel. Now I can drag that over on top of this clip here, and there it is. And typically when you add a super like this, you use a cross dissolve to start it off. So I can go get a cross dissolve and go effects and go to video transitions. But an easier way to do this is just to put it to the beginning like that, make this track active, turn off this track down the bottom, and press Control or Command D and that'll add the default transition, which in this case is dissolve, cross dissolve, and dissolve that guy on like so. And I can have it go for a while here. Usually when I use supers, I try not to have them on screen when there's too much motion going on in the screen. So here I'm just beginning to zoom out on this thing when I shot this. So right about the point where the zoom has just started should be the place where the shot should end. So I'm gonna drag it out to there. Now I'm gonna go Control or Command D to add a cross dissolve there as well. So it looks like this. Comes on slowly, goes along for a while, and then dissolves out as the zoom begins. All right, now we're going to create a title for Louise to identify her. So I'm going to go back over to the project panel, and I'm going to click on the new item icon and go to title again. There you go. We're going to call this one individual. Super, like that. Now I want to find a template for her. So I want a lower third for her. So I click on templates here. We're going to go find a lower third. So I'm going to close this up and find a lower third collection there. There we go. If I scroll through here just by clicking on one and pressing the down arrow, I can kind of scroll through. Let's just see which one do I want to use. Lots of them there. I want to go on down to, let's say, 1107. So if I just go through all these different guys, I kind of want to go right there. That's the one I want to use. So I'm going to click OK. And that comes in like that. Now, from my point of view, that's not quite as large as I want it to be, but I'm going to work on the text first, and then we're going to worry about its size. So I want to start at the top here. I'm going to get my type tool, or I can just click on this 
And if I double click inside it, then that actually turns it into the type tool. But now I can select it like that and replace it. So I'm going to type in Louise's name here, Louise Labrucherie. I'm going to go down here for the subheading and click on that, double click it to select it, and I'm going to put on Instructor. You might notice that everything is uppercase. That's just actually small caps. That's one of the options over here under Properties for the text. All right, now we want to fix things a little bit. I want to make these boxes larger, and I want to make the text larger. So I'm going to click on the Selection tool. I want to select this box on the bottom. Easy to select because it goes off to the side. I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Just pull the bottom down a little bit to make it larger this way. I want to bring it in so that it doesn't extend all the way out here like that. So I'll bring it in just to after the word instructor changes there. I want to make the one on top taller and also make it wider. So I click on it to make it active. I need to drag it to the right like that past the end of her name like that. Lift it up a bit like that. There we go. So that's fine. Now I want to get the text to be a little bit larger too. So if I have the selection tool active, I just click on it and that makes the text active. So I can now just drag it up like that and that will increase its size. Simple as that. I could do the same thing in the bottom, but I don't really want to change the size of the text on the bottom. Move that down a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to click away and see how that looks. And that works for me. So we've taken this template and now put it to good use. I'm going to close this down. It's going to automatically save it using the name that we gave it, Individual Super. Try to get over to Louise, put it on like that. And we'll do the cross dissolve business with that as well. As long as this track is active, Control or Command D will add a cross dissolve there where the current time indicator is located. I'll press the down arrow to go to the end, and I'll press Control or Command D to add another cross dissolve there. So here's how that looks. Good job. That is exactly. Okay. All right. Now I want to make a list. It'll be a standalone item. It's not going to appear on top of something else. Go here to the new item icon and click on title. We'll call this one list. OK. Right now we're over black in the video. That's because we're not really putting it on top of something, so it's easier to work here. Click on the templates. I want to find a list. In this particular case, I'm going to go to General right there. And I like music down here. I'm going to scroll down a bit so you can see them all. Music full looks like that. There are other ones as well. This is HD, lower third, side, other lower third. All these different options that you have here. I'm going to go up to Music HD Full like that, because we're dealing with HD video here. Even if it's not HD when you do it, you can always stretch it out to make it fit. This template has several elements. I'm going to go get the selection tool to click on them. There's the title, subtitle. This is text inside a text box. So you have several lines here of text in a box rather than one line of text. And this is a whole background here. That's a separate item. You can move it around, as you can see. So you can add a background or an image to a title. I'll press Control or Command Z to undo all that moving around. I just want to change the text, though. So if I get my type tool here, I can just go over here and when I get inside the text, you'd think it would change, right? See how it would change? But it's not changing here because the background there is kind of overriding what I'm trying to select. It doesn't always work that well. So you need to click on the selection tool and then click on this guy. And now you got it selected. If you double click again, now you've opened up the type tool inside there. Now we can change this to music concert or something like that. And the subtitle would be maybe the spring concert or something like that. So again, I'm going to click on it with the selection tool to find it. It'll be easier to double click on it. Now, sometimes it bounces around, as you can see. Sometimes it's tricky when you've got so many things here. Now I'm going to select it, get rid of that by dragging across it. Type in spring concert, like so. Now I want to put in text down here. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool to make sure I can grab that. There we go. Click inside it, click across this, and say selection. Number one, when I press return now, it's going to go down to the next line there. Press return again, or enter. Number three, number four. Now I'm going to press the delete key a few times to get rid of the ones after that. There you go. So we've got those guys on there. If I want to make that larger, I can use my selection tool and grab the bounding box. I can drag it up like that, and it'll make them all larger that way. There are other ways to make text larger too, of course, but that's one way to do it. It's kind of a great way to move things around if you want to make them larger. Same thing is true up here. If I want to make that larger, I can pull that up. If I want to move this, I can click on it and say, let's move it down a little bit, a little bit to the right, perhaps. Once you select these guys, you can move them around the screen. There you go. All right, we're done with this. I think we've wrapped that guy up. So I'm going to go down here, add it to our project, take the list here and put it here. It'll be by default, it'll be five seconds long. Maybe I can make it a little bit longer, drag it out a bit. What I want to do now is I want to reveal these guys one at a time. Right now, they won't reveal. So I'm going to reveal them using a crop tool. Now, if I put a crop tool on this selection down here, 
it's going to make the whole thing disappear. I'll show you that. I'll go over to Effects. Then I've got Crop down here in my Color Correction group, or you can find it by just typing in CROP. I'm going to add it to that guy. What I want to do now is I want to use the Crop tool as a way to reveal this. So I click on this, go to Effect Controls, click on Crop, drag the bottom here like that, and well, that's not going to work, right? So what we need to do here is we need to make another instance of this list and have it be blank. And we'll have that in the background, and we'll reveal this one on top. So I'm going to double click on this to reopen it inside the titler. And then I'm going to go up here where it says you can click on this to get a new title based on the current title. Click on that. I'm going to call this one list blank. And what I want to do is get rid of all this stuff down here. Click on this. Now I can get rid of these two guys on top as well, but that's not really so critical. I'll just leave them there. So I'm going to now close this down and that will automatically save that thing called list blank. What I want to do is put this underneath this one. So I'm going to drag this up, which you can see is just showing that cropped area. Put the blank one below it and stretch it out to the whole distance there. And now it looks like it's one little guy there. Click this one on top to reselect it so we can see it inside the effect controls. Click on crop so you can see the bounding box. Put on keyframes for the bottom because we're going to drag the bottom down now. And I want this keyframe not to be a standard keyframe because it'll gradually go from one thing to the next. I want to make it a hold keyframe. So I'm going to right click on it and say hold. There we go. Now I'm going to go a little bit farther into the list, like what there, for example and pull this down to reveal the first one like that. When I do that, that automatically adds a keyframe. Go a little bit farther into the clip, pull this one down again, that reveals the next one, and so on, and so on, like that. Let's see how this works. I'll click away here, and now we'll play this. Come on to first title, boom, there. Next title, next title, next title, there you go. That's how you can reveal things using the crop tool and hold keyframes. A little trick here, folks. Let's move on down to this last one here. I've got these various guys coming on in various locations here. What I want to do is create a little background that goes in the bottom and then some text. And so I want to go get a template for that. So I'm going to go over here to new item, title. We'll call this one family super background. Have this one based on a template. I'm going to go down to travel, believe it or not. I look at passport, you see they got passport full, various things here, but what I like is this one on the bottom, the HD low. I'm gonna open that one up. And I like it because I like the graphic. So I'm gonna click here to get rid of the text, get rid of that, and just save this. I can use that as a background above this blurred out photo down there. So I'm gonna go over here, pull this thing down, pull these three on top up. So I'm gonna select these three only and pull them up one notch, like that one layer like that and put this family super background here on top of this one down below. Stretch it out like so. What I want to do is have it come on. Let's say when this thing starts going away like that, then I'm going to bring this one on. So I can pull this over like so. And I can add a dissolve to it by going Controller Command D. It's a dissolve on it. That'll bring that thing in after that thing fades out. Got this little background underneath there, which is kind of cool. Okay, let's go back and do the same thing again. I'm going to make a new title. Call this one family name. I can go back and get that same template now. Go to template here, go to passports, and get that same one we got before like that. And now what I want to do is I want to rearrange these guys. I want to pull this name over here to the right, for example. Have it be a title for the whole thing. I want to take this one up and put it under the house like that. And I can change the text here and add these to fit the next scene. And right now I don't see the next scene, but if I scroll forward like this, I'll eventually get to the next scene or I can go over here to be more exacting, like this. Big images sometimes are slow to appear. There we go. And once I've got them lined up like that, I can go back here and I can say, okay, this whole thing should maybe go over here instead of where we had it before. The subtitle could be a little larger if we want to do that. And in the case of this text, you'd want to select that background at the bottom and delete it because we have that background in a separate title. So now I think you get a sense of how you can use templates. You can use parts of a template, just the background, just the text. You can rearrange the text, and you can change the size of the text. In later lessons, I'll show you how to change other aspects of the text, plus add graphics and images.